Hi guys, welcome back to Last Humans Tech. In this one, we're going to talk about hardware and kernel modules and kind of see how it all relates to the Linux system. So all hardware and devices are going to be files under the dev directory. And all these files allow the hardware to communicate to the Linux kernel. That's what your device files are for. Now you can have device drivers in kernel modules that are add-ons or you can have device drivers in the core kernel module itself. Now some of the advantages of having separate kernel modules is you might need to upgrade or update a device driver and if this is locked into the kernel itself you're going to have to recompile that kernel every time you make small updates and this could affect the operating system and is not ideal. Also, you do not want your kernel to get too big, so it would not make sense to store hundreds and hundreds of unneeded drivers in the kernel itself. That is why they allow you to have separate modules which you can add as needed to suit your particular system and configuration. These modules are stored in lib modules with an S, and we will look into this a bit later. Those are your kernel numbers. Now you have a directory called proc here. This is a virtual directory which is created on startup and it has every hardware device and file is created in this proc directory during boot up. Then you have the sys directory. This contains hardware information for the systems and devices. And we'll take a quick look at that right here. Let's go ahead and confirm our kernel number here. We'll use a uname-a if I spell it right. And this shows that we're doing a 3.19 kernel. Let's go ahead and delve into the CD modules directory. And here you can see you have your kernel numbers. So we know from above that we are running on the 3.19 kernel. So I'm going to change directory 3.19 with a star meaning a wildcard, everything else. And this is where you would find the modules for this particular kernel at this moment. Let's go back to the proc directory. Remember that's a virtual directory. Let's look at some of the files here. You can see you have mem info, you have CPU info. Let's go ahead and see what these say. CPU info so it builds this upon boot and you can see it's an i7 processor now this is the processor in my laptop this is a virtual machine but it can still gather that we can also look at the mem info and it shows all the memory stats for this particular box this is in the proc and this is created during startup finally we can look at a file called mounts which will show all the mounted file systems that are currently up on this machine. Now keep in mind all of these files will disappear when the machine is shut off. As we said this is a virtual file system that is created on every boot to store real-time device information. Now we have a sys directory also. This is used for, by the system to show devices and let's go ahead and look in here. Let's look into dev which is devices and you can see block and character devices in here too. So this is another way that the system keeps track of the hardware and devices. Now it's also clear and you have a dev directory. This is another device directory and this also controls device drivers. It holds device drivers. The thing is that you do not have every device which is in here. This has more than you need. This has extras which are not on the system. So you wouldn't necessarily be using every single device listed in this directory. It has some extras and some obsoletes and things like that. Now we're going to talk about a few hardware info commands you can use. One is hdparm to look at the hard drives. You have lsusb to look at USB devices. You have lsmod to look at kernel modules. And you have lspci to look at your PCI and bus devices and we're going to go into more detail on each one in just a minute. 
So first, let's look at the HD Parm for hardware devices. Let's see if this works just like this. It did not work, and it's giving me options saying you're not using the correct syntax, which I did know. I wanted to show you that. So let's look at our disks here with an F disk and a list, dash L option. And what this will do is show our device paths here, dev SDA1 and dev SDA2. So now let's go back to that HD Parm, but let's put a path in there. And we'll see if this works. This did work. So with your HD Parm, you have to have a device path in there in order for this to work. And this can just give you extra details on the specific hard drives themselves if you're troubleshooting some type of issue. Then you have the LSUSB command, which will show USB devices. Of course, there is hardly any on this machine because it is a virtual machine on Oracle VM Virtual Box. But if you have a regular machine, you would see a lot more entries here in the USB listing. Let's look at the LSPCI before we get into the modules here. So the LSPCI, just think of it like list PCI and list USB. It just kind of makes sense. And to list your PCI, it's showing all your PCI bridges here. Again, a virtual machine with a virtual guest service, so it's a little bit funkier than a standard machine. But those are some commands that you can use to look at your various hardware on this machine. A very important command on your Linux is going to be lsmod. This is going to list all the modules which are installed on your particular computer. And you can use the mod info command to get detailed info on any particular mod that you like also. So remember the lsmod is very important when you need to check which kernel modules are on your system. Now you also have insmod, which will not work here because I don't have the actual module downloaded, which would be to install a mod, insmod. And the same thing, you have rmmod to remove a module. And if you can see that it's not going to let me do this because this module has other dependencies and it's in use by other processes. So the RM mod will also look out for your dependencies and make sure you don't accidentally remove a module that something else is currently using. Now you do have a command called mob, mod probe, which will just refresh your package, kind of update it. And you won't even see anything happen, but it just makes sure that the install is good and everything is complete. You have a command called dep mod. And what this does, it's going to build a dependencies file, which we will look at later. This just refreshes in case there were any changes and builds a dependency list for every module that's on the system. So let's go ahead and look at that dependencies file that we just built. We're going into lib modules or live modules. Let's do a uname A again to confirm which kernel we are on, 3.19. So that is the directory that we would like to go into. And in here, you can see modules.dep. That is the dependencies file that we just created with this dep mod up here. And this refresh the modules.dependencies file. Now let's cd into the kernel folder within this modules directory. And we can do ls and we can see various kernel modules here. Let's cd into drivers, go even deeper, just to show you where we are here. We're in lib modules, the kernel name folder, kernel drivers. We're digging deep, deep down into here. And let's go ahead and just look at ACPI, for example. And let's see what's in here. What you have here are .ko files. And these are module files, so that's very important to remember. The .ko is a module file for the Linux system. Now for hot plug devices, you have a daemon called HALD, H-A-L-D. And this is the hardware abstraction layer daemon. 
And this provides dynamic and changing information as devices are plugged in and, and unplugged. And this provides instant information to the system and kernel regarding any time a hardware is changed. You also have the sys FS process, which is always running, which provides virtual information from the system file to your applications when the hardware is also changed. And finally, you have a DBUS daemon, which notifies the app and the system when any hot plug device is connected. So you can see just how many different processes and devices are all managing this hardware on the system. There's so many different areas for you to learn and the kernel modules is one of the most important areas. You also have the UDEVD daemon. What this does is it creates a virtual file under the dev system. Anytime a hot plug device is plugged in, it's going to initialize it and create a virtual file under the dev directory. And what it's going to use, if we go into Etsy and UDEV, and rules.d. Let's go into the rules.d folder. And these are the actual rules that the udevd daemon is going to be using for its functions. And that again is in Etsy udev rules. So, what this udevd daemon does in a nutshell. It's going to initialize a device that is plugged in. It's going to create a device file entry in the dev directory. It's going to mount and configure it. And it's going to let the processor know about this new device. This could be a test question. So make sure you are familiar with the UDEVD daemon, which is constantly updating the hardware information for hot plug devices. This concludes the hardware and kernel modules discussion. I hope you learned a lot about how devices are handled in the Linux system, and I hope you come back for the next lesson. Thanks for watching.